welcome back to the channel with the beginning of this new month I thought I would do another budgeting video this one dedicated to those who are new to budgeting or maybe haven't actually sat down to look at their finances and if numbers are not your thing fear not I have broken this budget down into three simple categories so you can make sure you still have enough money to pay your bills and work towards your other financial goals if you're new around here make sure to click that subscribe button down below it'll update you each and every time I upload a video also leave me a comment down below in the comment section of something you are saving money for this fall or if you have any big just financial goals that you are trying to hit this template will also be available for anybody who would like it I will have it on my mailing list if you have not yet joined my mailing list it will also be listed down below in the description box you can just click the link and go ahead and put your email in there you'll receive something like this at the end of the week as well as a fourth tip not included in this budget but without any further ado let's get started all right number one is to get the facts that's the fun phrase I use for you need to get your numbers. And when I say get the numbers, list all things you are financially responsible for. I hope you guys can read all this. all the things you are responsible for and what I mean like things that you pay each month so things you pay each month there are two types of things that you have to pay each month the first are your that's a one circled by the way I'm really good first are your fixed expenses things that don't change which would be like your rent or your mortgage and then your variable expenses, which would be like a restaurant budget. Variable expenses. So once you know what all your fixed expenses are and your variable expenses, add them all up and get the number. I'll just put here, get the number. This is what you need. And once you have the number, it's done. Unless something drastically changes in your life or you've hit a goal or you paid something off, you should know what you are responsible to pay each and every month. Number two, this should be everyone's favorite, is to compare the cash flow. Compare cash flow. Is the money coming in greater than the money coming out? So I'll write money coming in, meaning when you get paid or the total amount of money you're paid each month. Is it greater than or equal to number one, the money you're responsible to pay? Really, whenever I talk to people about their finances, it's number one that they don't want to do. Some people, for some reason, don't want to know how much they spend, whether or not they're ashamed of how much they spend in like restaurants or if they gamble or if they paid too much or didn't get a good down payment and they have a really high mortgage or rent. Number one is really the toughest to come by. Number two, when you have to see how much money you have coming in, this is more of the fun number for some people, maybe not for all. And for those I've talked to, when they look at the cash flow, if the money coming in does not equal the money that you have to pay, that's when we start talking about things like side hustling, dropping down how much we go out each week or how much we spend each month. That's how we will bring this number down. But let's move on really quickly to number three. Number three talks about whether or not the money coming in is greater than or less than the money you must pay. Number three, we divide it into two quadrants. So number three, if a cash flow is higher, meaning you will have leftover money, which means you will have left over money, freeze, this leftover money, we're gonna give it a job. We're not just gonna go and spend it or at least all of it, you'll spend a little bit of it. Take the leftover money, let's say for example, 
let's say you have $100 left over after you did one and two. I always advise to take 40% of your leftover money, put that into your savings. And some people say, Kristen, I already put things in my savings. That's in my get the facts. I'm responsible for my savings. And that's great. Put an extra amount on your savings. For me personally, if I have something extra and I don't know what to do with it and I don't want to just throw it into my savings account where it's going to get 0.05% interest, I'll put that extra money on my mortgage in an additional payment. But 40% to savings and 60% to spending. You can spend it any way you want. Maybe this month you have a little bit of extra money, but you know next month you're not going to have that extra $100. You can hold on to that $60 from this month and put it into your emergency fund for the next month. That was A. B is if the cash flow is lower than your payments. getting outside the border here. Three things I recommend doing. One, downsize, that's size, I'm sorry, downsize variable expenses. The thing we talked about right here, variable expenses, things that can change each month like a restaurant budget or an entertainment budget. Cut it in half or maybe try to cut 20 to 30 percent if you can. I understand if you have kids, that's not as much of an option, but try to cut down on your variable, variable expenses, excuse me, downsize variable expenses. Another suggestion I give is what can you sell that you are not using? This comes into the idea of minimalism and keeping only the things that you need or the thing we talked about before, which are side hustles. I actually have a video on various side hustles, websites where to find them in your specific town or city. I will link this video of side hustles above in the cards. I've gotten so many comments on it. People are thanking me for giving them the actual tools and websites. This was a great project. I really like making that video. Once again, I will have it linked up in the cards for you guys to see. But Beginner's budget for those that hate numbers. One, get the facts, list out everything you're responsible for each month with your fixed expenses and your variable, get the number. Number two, compare the cash flow, the money you get each month. Is the money coming in greater than or equal to the money you must pay each month? And three, if it is, Take the money that's left over, 40% to savings, 60% to spending. And if your cash flow is not as much as what you are responsible to pay each month, downsize variable expenses, what can you sell that you're not using, and side hustles, can you bring in a little more money each and every month? That is my no BS, get the numbers out on the paper, beginner's budget if you hate numbers. And once again, this template is free to whoever wants it. Just click on my email sign up list in the description box and get your free copy here, as well as a bonus tip that I will put in my email list. If you want the fourth final bonus tip, go ahead and sign up for my mailing list. Just a fun fact, that bonus tip is what got me the brand new couch you're gonna see in this outro for no money down. I paid cash for all of my furniture. Thank you guys so much for watching my budgeting for beginners video. Once again, the fourth tip to the series will be available to everybody on my mailing list. Just go ahead and click the link below in the description box and sign yourself up. If you are also watching this unsubscribed, click that little red subscription button down below. It'll update you each and every time I upload a video. And once again, if you like these videos, give them a thumbs up and leave me any of your budgeting goals down in the description box. I know I have promised you guys a house tour for the longest time and I can finally start getting one in progress. As you see behind me, this is my brand new couch that I just bought here for the fall. I think it's wonderful, it's so nice. My mom actually found it and was like, you need this couch, and I saw it and I went, I do need that couch. But we're hoping to get a house tour here for you guys, but until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one, bye.